Welcome back to the garage. Today is the day where we install this rebuilt carburetor that we rebuilt in the previous episode at my buddy's shop. And let's put it on our old 49 Ford here to see if we can't get it running. So in addition to our said beautifully rebuilt carburetor, thank you, Jerry, we have some new fuel lines, compression fittings, and an ever needed fuel filter. And just for reference, this this bottle of Gatorade, it's not Gatorade. This is what's in the tank right now. This is the fuel quality that is currently in the fuel tank. We won't be using this. We won't be using that tank. We won't be using any of that system. We're gonna run our carburetor off a little catch can with some fresh gas. We're still gonna run it through the fuel filter because just in case, you know, I wanna make sure we get good, clean, good and clean quality fuel to our carburetor. So let's get cracking installing this, the Ford. Ford 94 carburetor. All right, we got the motor pretty much ready to go. Our new gasket is already on place right up in here. We got our carburetor fresh ready to install. I'm just gonna kind of plop it on there and hook up all the connections. Make sure we hook up our vacuum vents, fuel, and all the little nuts and bolts that go along with it. So now that we got the carburetor all bolted in, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the throttle and the choke. I'm gonna use this here, this new Mayhew Made in USA screwdriver. These things are great. They come in the standard length and the long length. 100% made in USA. It's got a nice comfort handle. And this one here is good. It's got a nice fine tip on it, nice thin tip, which is gonna help me get to this screw here for the choke. And we also gotta install the cable bracket on the back right now. So this is where old meets new. New fuel line, new compression fittings for the fuel, new nuts, and this is kind of where old meets new. These new nuts are 13 millimeter, whereas the old ones are half inch. So, I mean, a lot has changed in the last, what, 70 something years since these cars were made. Most stuff has shifted over to the metric system. I'm not saying I like it, it's just the way it goes. All right, let's get these put on. Here is what good clean fuel looks like. This came out of the gas can for the lawnmower. It's fresh 87 octane. And here is probably a lot less than 87 octane. This is the old crappy fuel from the tank and the good fuel that we're, well, in theory, gonna get the motor to run off. Moment of truth time. <sighs> Don't drink that. Two hours later. All right, so I'm thinking, I think we flooded the motor a little bit. The battery's really weak. Not enough to spin the motor off fast enough to get the fuel pumping through. So we're gonna put on our six volt charger for a few minutes and then see if we can't get it spinning, but Got a couple sputters out of it, and not much else. Oh, the joys. Oh. All right, so I think I might have figured out one problem real quick. If you look down here, I'll try to zoom in. Here's our distributor, here's our condenser, and here's the points. I got the lobe on its highest point right there, so the point should be open. I can't even fit a feeler gauge in there for the points gap. It should be .014. And I got nothing, barely fit anything in there. It's like smaller than a piece of paper. So I think that's one of the problems right there. We're gonna get this adjusted with a new condenser, new points, and then check the timing, the motor, and then we'll try it again. 2,000 years later. Well, that was easy.
All right, so all that fuss, and it was a points problem. New carburetor, check. New plugs, check. Points, condenser, check. Cap and rotor, check. And now the thing's running like a dream. Listen, ready? Oh, that is amazing. All right, so what was happening is right here I have the old points and condenser. These points, and I don't know if you can see it really well, try to zoom in right here. They open and close, and this is what causes the engine to spark at every cylinder. So it's got eight cylinders, so every lobe of the cam that goes around just opens and closes. This is supposed to be set to like 14 to 16 thousandths. And when I check the gap in here, this gap, um, th there was no gap, it was like non-existent. So it was barely, barely opening to cause that spark loss. And without spark loss, the field closes down around itself and causes the ignition coil to send all that voltage to the corresponding cylinder. And without the right gap, it wasn't getting the right discharge to the cylinders and it wasn't running. As you can see now, it's running like a champ. I love it when a plan comes together. So there we have it. 1949 Ford. Charlie is running. What's next? Well, I think we got to do a fuel tank, fuel sender, and get some good stuff going in the back. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you.